Hello and welcome to this episode of Flashback where we're going to talk about Vishwarupam. But before we begin, a small word about film analysis. People often ask, how do you know this is what the director meant? Short answer, I don't. Unlike uh, maths or science, there is no fixed answer in art. Art analysis is a mix of the abstract and the concrete. The concrete thing is the film or the book or the song or the poem or whatever. The abstract thing is your reaction to it, how you piece it together using your head and your heart. And since everybody's head and heart works differently, I'm not saying my way is the only way you should see the film. What I give you is my reading, my interpretation. If it matches your reading or your interpretation, well and good. If it doesn't, hopefully it'll still be something that's interesting and give you another way to look at the movie. Let me explain this with an example. Let's look at the first time in this movie that we see Omar the villain. He is in a room seen from the outside and the composition is a frame within a frame. So let's say that my analysis is that this makes it look like Omar is in a cave. Now I need to back up this analysis. I need to offer proof. So here's my proof. This frame within the frame, the sense of being in a cave is seen throughout the Afghanistan portions. So if you don't buy this, you could ask, isn't this frame within a frame composition present outside of the Afghanistan portions as well? Sure, you have this shot and this shot and this especially lovely shot. But see how much more frequently and how repeatedly it occurs in the Afghanistan portions. So for me, the first shot of Omar that we saw earlier in that room looks like an extension of these shots. It's like a subliminal bit of coding. I'm not saying the director put it there. I'm just saying the film, the frame allows itself to be read this way. So this kind of analysis means you become proficient in the visual language of film. You look at patterns, themes, framing, repetition, musical cues, and you see whether the film itself, that is what is actually on the screen, gives you proof to back up your observations the things that you sense at an instinctive level. Now let's get into the movie. As always, there are going to be spoilers, so proceed with caution. On the surface, Vishwarupam is a genre film. It's a spy thriller. It's a classic good versus evil tale. The spy, that is the good guy, foils the plans of the terrorist, the bad guy. What makes this film different, however, is what I call the Kamalisms. Even in this very generic structure, it's what I like to call the big dumb action movie. And even in this structure, Kamal Hassan, who is the writer and director, infuses a lot of smartness, a lot of texture that you don't usually find in the big dumb action movies that you get from Hollywood. Think of the typical Steven Seagal or Bruce Willis movie. Entertaining? Yes. But textured and meaningful? I don't think so. So what makes this movie so smart? Firstly, there's a research that's gone in. That means that you actually learn something from a movie. For instance, the fact that Muslims shave their body hair in order to attain a perfect level of cleanliness before God. It's part of a tradition called Fitra. Here's another thing I did not know before Vishwarupam. I didn't know what a wet job meant. It's actually a covert assassination performed by government operatives. Jag, work tomorrow. Let's hope it doesn't turn out to be a wet job. But this is just surface stuff in the sense that you can just Google all this stuff up. The real reason Vishwarupam is so smart is because it respects the audience's intelligence like in the superb sequence which shows how even a fake shootout can escalate into gun culture. We start with a fake shooting. <laughs> and slowly move to actual gunfire all within the same stretch. This is also such a beautifully directed sequence which moves from within the four walls of a house to the streets outside to the training ground. What it's saying is that what you teach kids today is what they'll end up doing tomorrow. Kamal Hassan is rooted in a lot of the classic Indian storytelling traditions. Vishwarupan therefore uses and at the same time tweaks a lot of the masala tropes that are familiar to us beginning with the classic Hindu-Muslim angle. The title of the film is written from right to left like Urdu or Arabic and the music too is what is generally used in cinema to convey an Islamic flavour. The first person we see is a Muslim, but the first voice we hear is that of a Hindu, a Tamil Brahmin woman who is speaking in a specific Brahminical idiom. And we slowly move to the Kamal character Vishwanath. The Hindu name literally means Lord of the Universe and he's performing a dance about Lord Krishna. Of course, he's later revealed to be a Muslim. A good Muslim, like we see in this scene, 
Omar watches the execution scene with relish. He rewinds and watches it, whereas Wissam turns his head away. But here's the tweak. Even though he's a good Muslim, he or his religion is not wholeheartedly embraced even by his own people. Look at the scene where Wissam and Imtiaz, who are both on the same side, discuss how Taufik, the opium dealer, got accused of treachery because of them. But there are also Hindus who are not like Imtiaz. They display compassion like what Jagannath says after seeing the celebrations after Osama's killed. So the film refuses to make one side fully good and the other side fully evil. And even within this Muslim community, we get this masala trope which is familiar to us from films like Diwar of the hero and the villain coming from the same stock but turning to opposite directions. Because Umar and Wissam are brothers in a way. They follow the same religion and they follow the same rituals. Now let's look at another masala movie staple, the presence of two heroines. Again, this is subverted. One of the heroines is the wife Nirupama and she ends up cheating on the hero. The other one, Ashmita, ends up being a covert operative. So they're not just there for the hero to sing songs with. And also remember how in so many masala movies, the heroine will insult the hero and the hero will turn around after some point and point out a mistake. There's a possibility here for something like that when Nirupama calls her husband Ad, that thing. <laughs> But later, she's not put in a place in a very obvious way. There's no reminder, nobody's saying Ipapatiya, nobody's saying, look, this is why you should not judge people by their looks. Wissam's reply to her is just a small raised eyebrow after his transformation. Now, let's look at the hero introduction scene, which every masala movie primes us for. Usually, a character says something about the hero, something that primes us for this entry, something like, and then we cut to the hero. So here, Nirupama says something like that. But wait. Our normal illa. So we think it's going to be our normal illa, our superhuman or something like that. But the hero turns out to be not normal in a very different and unheroic way. He even puts himself behind the heroine. Hello, Mrs. and Mr. Vishwanath's residence. Now let's look at the hero entry shot, the face reveal shot. As Kamal steps out from the shadows into the light, we get a very effeminate kind of leading man. <laughs> Again, this is a superb subverting of a masala movie staple. And then of course we have what has come to be known as the Marana Mas action sequence. It's all over between the time it takes for two drops of water to fall. And the film primes us for this by periodically cutting to drops of water before the fight breaks out. And yet, later, the film does something unusual. A masala hero typically does not have to justify why he's going after the villain. But in Vishwarupam, he's forced to answer this question. Look, this is more complicated. And this makes the whole thing more realistic, at least within the genre. Kamal is usually accused of narcissism, but here, he's always accompanied by a team, whether in Afghanistan or in New York. Beyond all this, for those who have been following Kamal's career, there are all the things that have come to be associated with this cinema. Like the very realistic way of depicting violence. Look at Taufik's broken nose, how fabulously horrifying the makeup is. And look at this great shot of a broken body. I confess, I like blood and gore, especially when done creatively, not in real life, but in the movies. Here's another Kamalism. The characters are from various parts of the world. From Kashmir, Mayavaram, Afghanistan, America, there's even someone from Nigeria. In Kamal's films, we also find characters from different religions. Here, apart from Hindus and Muslims, we get a Christian named Peter Manivannan. Detective Peter Manivannan here. And a Sikh named Gurnihal Singh. It's a very inclusive universe he creates in his films, and through this, we get a bit of political commentary as well. When we see the poster that introduces us to Wissam Ahmad Kashmiri, there's a question mark next to the word Indian. And this acknowledgement of the debate around the state of Kashmir is boosted by this following scene, which shows India being referred to as the motherland and Pakistan being referred to as the fatherland, as it often is. Then we get what may be a hint at Kamal's love for the Godfather. He's already developed the theme of that film into Tevar Magan. Here we get a mirror image of the first scene from that film which fades in from black and a man says, I believe in America. I believe in America. America has made my fortune. I believed in America. 
எனக்கு விமோசனமே இங்கே தான் தோணிது Kamal Hassan also likes to feature animals in his films like that elephant and hare arm here we get a horse and then there are these existential questions oh god kadaval dhan kaapathanu endha kadaval kamal's films always are jam packed with detailing i'll just point out this one shot where you see a picture a photograph of the vamana avataram of vishnu which is the avatar in which he assumed a vishwarupam but this is what i really like about that shot in the bookshelf right next to the vamana avataram picture you find a book called samayal cooking is something we saw kamal do much earlier and it's kind of fun to imagine this warrior teaching himself how to cook using books like this one I spoke about how this film respects the intelligence of the audience not everything is spoon fed for instance the character of imtiaz is not highlighted to us yet he always keeps hovering the background of the afghanistan scenes so we know him by face and so it's not a complete surprise to us about who he is when he gets a scene to himself later now let's look at the writing of the characters again there are lots of shades of gray umar the villain is one eyed you could take this to mean that he is closed in his vision when his son nasser talks in english he doesn't like it because that's the language of the infidels you speak english he don't amma sayira vele drogam Omar realizes that a family member named Jalal may be the one who's been teaching Nasser English so he gets angry and rips off Jalal's prosthetic leg But later when he thinks his family has been wiped out he weeps for the same Jalal holding that leg that becomes the one symbol of his family that he still has he keeps it with him he even uses it as a weapon Then we get Nasser Omar's son. This is the boy who wants to be a doctor and he's upset that his father wants to turn him into a warrior. So when Wisam puts him on a swing, he resists. I am not a child. Later though this boy is seen swinging on his own. He just doesn't like it when someone forces him to do something. As a contrast, we have Mammu who has resigned himself to being told what to do. This boy sits on a swing and allows himself to be pushed around so to speak. I also like the little touches in Wisam's character. See his reaction when Nirupama comes home late. The first time you see Vishwarupam, you think this is because this character is sad that his wife is having an affair. But when you see the film again, you realize that maybe this is not the entire story. Maybe there is something else behind the expression. Maybe it's because that he's using her and she deserves a better life. Also, I love how this man is haunted by the past. When asked his name, he says, "Om Perena." Ah? Taufik. Taufik is the opium dealer we will see later. Allah promise. Nasser da imper. And Nasser is Omar's son. Again someone we will meet later. Now let's talk about the duality in the film. Ashmita says, "Inge larku double door. Poruma." So as a very literal symbol, we get this two-faced statue. The two-faced concept also means that there is another side to people, something you don't expect. Like Nirupama is a Brahmin who eats chicken, Wisam is a Muslim who is vegetarian. Are they pray Guruji? Fedi kada vishita hibla rasche samikrel. Duality is visible again in the two looks of Kamal Hasan. Not just the effeminate dancer and the macho warrior, but also in his change of appearance. In his present day because of his disguise, he's flabby, but in the past in the Afghanistan portions, he's super fit. There are other dualities in the film as well. Let's talk about the mask and the feminine in the early parts of course these roles are reversed in the hero in the song unai kanada you hear these lines yeder para male avan po pinirindu vande enai avan pinirindu vande which means it's the male that comes from behind but it's actually andrea who comes from behind and hugs Kamal Hasan Ashmita is playing Krishna Vishwanath is playing the Gopika but later we see how this film genuinely distinguishes between its men and its women in the Afghanistan portions the little boy Nasser plays mock games with both his father and his mother but they are very different kinds of games with the father the game is guess the weapon whereas with the mother he's playing a doctor who is treating a patient the men are violent they want war the women want peace and healing and scientific education we see this in the wisam nirupama portions in the end as well wisam and his team they're trying to save the day with brute power with guns and so on whereas it's nirupama who did a phd who actually saves the day she is the person of science and she is the one who comes up with the idea of the faraday shield this duality is expressed in many of the visuals too but first a note about the cinematography this is a beautifully shot film the cinematographer is sanu john Vargis there are many stunning frames and i especially like these visuals that bisect the frame into light and dark but coming back to the duality look at the number of images that deal with the reflections
Another way the duality in Vishwarupam is expressed is in the echo shots. The puppets on Times Square versus the puppet-like manner in which the costume is handed to the suicide bomber, the French doctor who shot in the head, the Nigerian who shot in the head, the insect that's buzzing around a weapon, later an insect that does something similar. We see an effeminate man and then we see boys dressed as girls. Best of all is this echo. At the beginning of the film, Vishwanath is cooking, he's preparing chicken in a microwave. And at the end, with the Nigerian bummer, what do we get? Again, a kitchen, chicken being prepared and a microwave. Above all, this is a very well-directed film. Have I said that before? I'll say that again. There is just so much attention to form, like how glass from an explosion segues into pixels on a computer screen, showing the connection between terrorism and money laundering. Another beautiful instance of interconnectedness is right at the beginning. We transition from a Muslim to a Hindu, that is, from Omar's side of things to Vishwanath or Vishwam's side of things by means of a pigeon. En route, this pigeon halts briefly at the Wall Street bull with the American flag fluttering nearby. Terrorism, capitalism, all in one shot. Now, all of this analysis doesn't automatically mean something is a great film. A film can allow itself to be read in very interesting ways and still fall short in many respects. Let's take Vishwarupam. You keep wondering about Andrea's character Ashmita. What exactly is she doing in the larger scheme of things? Why is she needed in this movie? The bad accents are very problematic and we miss large chunks of dialogues due to this. <laughs> And sometimes the performances are horribly cartoonish. What God is that? Allah. Other times you wonder about certain plot points, like why does Deep tell Nirupama about all this very confidential stuff? American banks in customers in Ambali, eh? In the customers. Yemen, most of the Middle East countries, For the first time. Nigeria. And then you wonder about the hero himself. Why does he display his skull cap, his Muslim skull cap, right in the middle of the street in the wide open? But here's the thing with Kamala's and serious films. Even if you find holes at the movie level, they are always worthwhile when taken as cinema, when taken as the entire art form. It's fascinating to see how he keeps experimenting with the mainstream format and constantly keeps trying to do something daring and original and creative. And at the same time, he also tries to make his movie for those who are just popcorn munchers, who don't care about movie as cinema, as an art form. He just tries to give them a casual movie going experience. And that's why I look forward to the sequel. <laughs> So that's it for this episode of Flashback. See you soon in the next episode. If you liked what you just saw, do subscribe to Film Companion South. Keep watching.